talk about a little bit about uh, the fourth Universal Dar es Salaam Research Week exhibitions. And specifically, the exhibitions that are currently going on at the College of ICT. The College of ICT does three main things. We do teaching, we do research, and we offer consultant services in the broad area of information and communication technologies. And recently, we have established two innovation hubs, an uh, ICT incubator. So all of this is in an attempt to extend and strengthen links between academia and the industry. So the idea of the Research Week exhibition is to actually showcase what the college does to the general public with the bigger aim, with the ultimate goal of forging strong academia industry links. And the main theme for our Research Week exhibition this year is enhancing research and innovation for sustainable natural resources utilization. And of, of specific relevance to my college is how can we use ICT to sustainably utilize natural resources. So to that end, we have a number of projects that are addressing challenges in different sectors from agriculture, health, and education that we think if addressed, we could uh, sustainably utilize natural resources. So I welcome the general public, I welcome the ICT stakeholders to come and witness what the College of ICT does. Uh, I will briefly mention representative projects that we are currently exhibiting. And for the rest of the projects, I strongly recommend those who come to visit and, and witness. Uh, we have the Department of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering that is exhibiting projects that can solve problems in rescue missions. And we have projects that can facilitate payments collection in the public transport. And we have the Department of uh, Computer Science and Engineering whereby students and the staff have developed the mobile applications that can be used in the health sector, in particular children. One such application uh, facilitates the reunion between street children and families. And another very spe special project is about nutrition. How could a parent track and enhance nutrition for their children? And we have another center called the Center for Virtual Learning, CVL in short. Uh, the Center for Virtual Learning is tasked with the bigger responsibility to build the capacity among university staff, students, and university, I mean, in higher learning institutions on how they can use or how they can leverage ICT to enhance their teaching and learning uh, processes. And we have the University of Dar es Salaam ICT incubator. This incubator has one main aim, and the aim is to build capacity among students and staff on how they can convert their ICT ideas into business processes, into businesses, into uh, products. And in this exhibition, they have five such uh, products or such ideas that are in their early stages and we encourage uh, potential investors to come and meet these students, these staff and discuss uh, potential business uh, opportunities. We also have a group of, of students who are working in um, ICT clubs, uh, we have a Java club, it's a team of uh, second year students who have developed their uh, management information system to help schools, secondary schools to manage their day-to-day -day activities. And we have the UNICEF Innovation Hub, and we have uh, recently launched uh, VI Lab. VI Lab is basically an Internet of Things Innovation Hub, whereby students come together, uh, meet their mentors, brainstorm, and develop quick prototyping of various products that can be used in the ecosystem of the Internet of Things, which has wide applications in the utility sector, like water, electricity, petroleum, and gas, 
and it can also be used in other sectors like healthy and education. The turnout is pretty impressive. We have received many people and we are hoping to get more people. So most welcome and let us discuss, let us brainstorm, let us see how we can leverage ICT to make a sustainable use of natural resources. Thank you very much. I am working with Humanitarian Open Street Mapping Team and the D-Lab that and the main data that we are collecting is differently that but mostly focus on community members and so far we have two projects that we're moving on. We have Ramani Huria that's being run by HOT and also we have the different project that is called Data Zetu also being run by HOT but and uh, D-Lab. Now I will explain these two projects in different perspectives because we're all doing it focusing on community members but different users of these data. Now on Ramani Huria we're mostly based on flood resilience flood resilience which based on collection of data that of people that are affected by floods and of recent what we are doing is collecting different information from different wards and different users that these wards or these community members are facing regarding flood. So far I will explain uh, one data that we have been collected, the people who are affected or people who are not affected and who are affected by floods. Uh, looking on our maps, we can see people who are affected and not only who are affected but with the road dots, with the road dots that are located on the places which are risk and they are much affected by these floods and also the white one, they are affected but not too much to that extent. But also the other area that is located with none, not that we had not collected data, but we have collected data, but those people are not affected by floods. This is how we're collecting this data. Also we have the other type of data regarding flood resilience. We know that this data needs to be located in different places. So in categorization, you're trying to create what we call Shina mapping that will try to locate everyone to his society or to the down, down, like down, local parts where are, are they located? We have collect data of different, like the names of Mjumbe, different Mjumbe, and the same colors represent one Mjumbe with different colors represent many Mjumbe. Now from these maps, we are creating different shape files that will be used by, by different NGO and different users. Now from these data, we can get the boundary of Mjumbe, like this one. So you can see the product. These are the raw data, but these ones are the already cleaned data that show the boundary of Mjumbe. Now, that's what Ramani Huria does. So it collects with regard of flood resilience mapping. And the other project is Data Zetu, which we mostly face on community also collecting data on social matters. Yeah, a good example we can display the maternity, uh, like the maternity issues. Uh, people, how do people access these services or how do people access these services regarding to where they stay? So we have collect data and see where are these people located, located or and the time that they are using from their home to their services. Like the map shows that the areas, this area, the, the dark dots like on the scales shows that the maps, the people that are located on this side, they are not maybe access, they're walking like long distance from their home to the services. And the people that are located on this place, okay, they have services and they're very near to their home. So this map can be used to analyze where people are staying regarding to the services that they need to acquire. Now, how do, can this map be used? This map can be used by an NGO to create 
or to create, okay, to sort out what is an issue and really know how do people face this issue. If they can walk 30 meters or 40, if they can walk 30 minutes or 40 minutes to reach their services, that means they need services to their area or near their area. And if people walk 20 or 10 minutes to their services, that means it's accessible by the community. Therefore, these data help to make decision making to NGO and or ministry or different uh, different institutions that they need to create initiatives to help so society and community members. Also the different data that we collect, we also collect employment employment sources or employment like employment level of the community and so we have uh, the number of people and the number of like people who are employed formal and informal. Also, Ramani Huria, we also collect the data for drains that tracing all drains in Dar es Salaam, they're tracing the blockage points and segment of different drains, showing their measurements, showing the, uh, the, the problem where they're blocked or where the, the direction of water goes or where there is no, like, uh, they, there is no clear direction of water that is being shown on the map. And this show that if maybe this area is affected or the drain ends somewhere and represent that there is no outflow or no exit that show that that problem should be flooded and if if no exit point is if the point show that there is no exit of water that means water will flow out to the settlement of people so this map also can be used to to create or to show where are the flood affect where are the flood affect much of the society and so this product we end we will, we will end with a flooding modeling that we show the like the place how the place how water flows on different areas of the society and show all the blockage and show where are the drained blocks or destructed or blocked thank you uh, my project is all about uh, an optimized and a cost effective electronic gadget it, it is seen over here uh, Particularly, this as the a device of which um, I come up with an idea in such a way that we needed to create a good environment for the students, especially when they are using electronic electronic devices for learning, so that they can only access uh, those sites which are necessary for a student to learn. So, if one is trying to use this kind of device and they're trying to access the sites of which they are not relevant to subject, he or she won't get an access. This is a device of which um, I have designed in such a way that uh, it's used only two parts. We need a microcontroller, which is a Raspberry Pi, and we need a display. So what it remains is all about uh, programming. Uh, the microcontroller is here at the back, and this is a display I'm talking about. So we need two parts, the microcontroller and the Raspberry Pi. As you can see, there are a lot of programming which has been done over here. This is a display, but once the display comes here, it has got no keyboard inside. But my intention is just to have an, a device which is uh, cost effective in such a way that I don't need to use an external keyboard. So what I can do, I have created my own keyboard inside here, of which you can access direct, coming to the menu, accessories, then you go to the keyboard. And now you can have a wide view of your uh, outlook there, then you can type what you have, and then you can access it to the internet. This device has been designed uh, to access internet two in two ways. You can use either um, an ethernet cable or you can use a Wi-Fi. If you can see here, we have uh, the side for Wi-Fi. Uh, so if you click there, it will bring to you a lot of Wi-Fi that's available here and then you connect there direct. And then you can browse now what you wish. But once you're using this kind of uh, device, uh, to the internet, it will give you only the access to the sites of the material uh, for studying and not otherwise. If you try to access for YouTube, you try to access for Instagram or WhatsApp, playing games, maybe watching movies, it won't give you access at all. So it is designed in such a way that you can only have a room for studying and not otherwise. Okay. This uh, device has been designed from the idea that uh, we have this kind of project we call Haro Study Project. Uh, these, these guys, they are doing with putting materials online for the internet or for different subjects. So we need to have a link so that we can uh, uh, grasp all that kind of information that are available to the internet by using this kind of device. 
Okay, we have this kind of uh, project again, uh, connected uh, by Halotech. They are trying to connect uh, our secondary schools with internet. But unfortunately, uh, you can imagine that uh, they are connecting uh, the schools with internet, but they don't give you those kind of students with the devices of which they can use to, uh, to access that kind of internet. So if we are talking about maybe to use the uh, laptop for the students, it becomes very expensive. So you find uh, according to economic situation, it becomes difficult for them to afford. But again, we can think about the mobile phones. Maybe you can allow the student to use mobile phones. Using mobile phones, you find a student maybe is receiving a call, trying to call someone, receiving a, maybe a message. It becomes a disturbance that you find finally there is no good time management for that particular student. So what I thought in my mind is that uh, to have a, a kind of device of which one, if one is using, he or she has got no room to visit the other sites apart from the ones uh, that are responsible for learning. So we have those, those people, we have a Halo study project, we have the Desa Points, we have the THL, all those groups are the ones that are dealing with putting materials on the internet. So once they're using this kind of device, because it is restricted only for learning, him or her will have a room to have a lot of information, particularly using internet, but in a safe way. Actually, uh, if you can give your child at your home or even your young brother or sisters to use this kind of device, you don't need a means of protecting him, maybe having a record, what have you done today, yesterday, what did you do, you see. So you find finally him or her will be dealing with the study only because finally we have a link to those sites that they are dealing with the materials for learning. So you can see at the back, I have a microcontroller, I have a display, and I have a ribbon cable. This ribbon cable is responsible for uh, taking information to and fro to the display and the Raspberry Pi. But I have an adapter board there uh, at, the, at, at, at the middle. This is to power uh, the Pi uh, together with the, the display. So my project actually has got two main blocks. That is the microcontroller together with the display and the rest is all about the programming of which I have done. And finally, I've come up with this kind of device of which now, if one is using, can connect it to the internet via Wi-Fi or using uh, Ethernet cable. So that's how it works. And finally, we don't need to see students uh, losing much time during with social media, networks, and things of that kind of which they are not necessary for learning. What him or her can do is just to access the materials that we have linked with only for learning. So we are running to uh, uh, in semi industrialized country around 2025. So, what do we need? We need to prepare students who are ready now to have a lot of knowledge to run that kind of industries. And how can we reach there? That means we should have a means on which we can make these students to have a lot of knowledge, especially via internet. We can reach there simply by having electronic devices of which it is affordable, as as mine here. Uh, maximum is about 250 um, thousand. So it is not uh, so much expensive compared to the laptops, and it is quite different from using mobile phones because mobile phones has got a lot of features. So what I have tried to do is to minimize the features which are not necessary, but again to make sure that. It, the cost of which uh, this kind of device will be uh, used is affordable for the majority. So that is what is done and finally we needed to see um, majority students uh, using this kind of device to improve their studies. Actually, at its completion, it will provide a vital role for the development of uh, uh, our, uh, we can say our, and then our what, what can I say? our knowledge and actually we shall get some people who are very uh, confident and uh, competent uh, in running those kind of industries since we are running to industrialize the country. So in brief, that's how it works. I'm working on a project called Kirimo Tarifa. What motivate, motivate me in coming with a project called Kirimo Tarifa uh, is a factor and problems that are existing in agriculture sector. Agriculture sector is a main sector that employs up to 80% of Tanzania population. 
and contribute up to 25% of national GDP. Small scale farmers are struggle in order to get uh, income and to increase productivity, but they face a lot of challenge uh, in the market. So there is a mismatch between what is produced and what is needed or a, a current market demand. So in Kirimo Taarifa, our solution provides an interlink between uh, farmers and market in two ways. First, a farmer can, can have, uh, uh, a, using a mobile phone, can have called my store in order to announce or publish what he have or what he, or what he or she is uh, selling. Also, a buyer can buy direct from the farmer. Also, in order to make more an attractive approach in marketing, we provide a buyer can provide a demand in order a farmer to buy direct, in order a buyer to buy from a farmer, and a farmer decide what to what to produce based on the market demand. So our solution will use a mobile phone. How it works? It's using USSD and SMS. In using a mobile phone, uh, our aim is to meet rural farmers because of uh, mobile usage up to 80% in mobile using. So using USSD, we reach many farmers. So a user into our system, he will choose different men to choose information that he want and connect them directly with the market. So <clears throat> what target that we have? We, we target, uh, our target is small farmers, medium and new farmers who want to start farming. And our mission is to help farmers to change from subsistence farming to commercial farming. How slow uh, providing of information, like the project name called Kilimo Tarifa. We want agriculture to be more profitable through commercial farming. Also, uh, into our system, we provide uh, an interlink between researchers and farmers. Research are uh, being done annual, but those research output cannot go direct. There is no way to reach farmers. So using a mobile phone in Kilimota Alifa, we provide a link to farmer to access uh, research output in simple way, anytime, anywhere, using a mobile phone. Thank you. We we'll launch Kilimota Alifa soon and can be helpful to farmers. I am a coach at Udicti. This is the section where you are at right now. Udicti is, um, used to be an incubator, but now is the innovation unit at Kwa City. We are actually responsible with coordinating everything that has anything to do with innovation in this college. And due to that, we've been working with undergraduate students from all over the university, helping them generate business ideas that can actually be potentially end up into in potential employment employment opportunities for the students themselves as well as their peers. And having worked with university students, we found that it's very difficult to get good ideas from university students if they are not, have not been trained to think like entrepreneurs since they, I mean, from their young age. So we thought it would be a good idea to start getting young kids interested in sciences, technology, engineering, and mathematics, the stands. Because we thought, if we catch the young minds right now, then we'll get very good people with skills and interest and intellect to come and join our university. And these will make even better ideas in, in the future. And towards this end, we came up with the Smart Kid Initiative. This idea, the idea was to take preschoolers from three years old to 15 year olds, I mean upper primary scholars, and expose them to scientific 
scientific concepts, scientific ideas, but in a fun and innovative way. So the idea was to come together with the kids, play together with them, make them have fun, meet their friends, but in the process get them to learn and explore scientific concepts. As you can see in the video showing behind me, we had kids come and play with something like this. This is something really ordinary, something you can find at home. So a three-year-old knows what this is. It's just a water bottle. And then this is just a balloon and some straws. So we'll get them to play with this. We'll make a car out of water bottle, something you can find anywhere. But this is not just a, an ordinary water bottle anymore. You blow from this end, you fill up the balloon, you let go this end, you have a moving car. This is something very simple, very fun to, to play with. But here you're introducing Form 4 physics to a three-year-old because that is Newton's third law of motion introduced to a three-year-old. That to every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Similarly, again, we fill this balloon, put it here. If there's water in there, we let air go, water starts flowing out. That sounds like magic to a three-year-old kid, but it's not really magic. It's just that there is air in the balloon. If there is air in the balloon, what does it mean? You can't see air, you can't touch it, but air can, can work. Air is matter, air can occupy space. It has pressure. So air pressure forces water out of the bottle, making it spit out of the straw. We, we had them play with some other <laughs> ordinary household items. This is the usual baking soda, this is the usual vinegar. You mix these two, something magic happens. If we put this in the bottle and put a balloon here, you'll see the balloon filling on its own. Why? It's a simple acid and base reaction that gives you salt and water and some gases in the end. So again, we can see gas getting out of a bottle and filling a balloon. So that way kids learned some chemistry lessons here. Very young kids got to learn chem chemistry lessons. They got to learn mathematics and physics. And with older kids, you can see they even built a robot. A simple robot made of card cardboard and syringes. So they could use again concepts like pressure to put pressure in, into a syringe, force water to, for example, lift a robotic arm and so on and so forth. So the idea was to gather kids who would be maybe idle at home during the holidays, get them here in a fun and safe environment, learn concepts that would make them very much interested in sciences and engineering subjects as well. And this has been, we have received very positive reactions from what we did as a pilot study. Many parents came asking for when the program would run again. We've had many kids wanting to come back. Even our own kids who also were participating in the programs keep wanting to come to our offices because they think this, these are the things we, all, we always do when we come to the office. So we think we are going in the right direction starting working with kids, getting them interested into STEMs, and potentially having very good entrepreneurs and innovators in sciences. Thank you. I'm currently working on a project called Mobile Kibubu. Uh, Mobile Kibubu is a financial inclusion assistant it, to help users um, to make sure that their financial records are kept into, into the system. Mobile Kibubu is the Android and the USSD platform developed by us in order to make sure that people with low income and middle income are served in the Tanzania at large. Okay, now I'll show you how the system works. And now I'll take you through how the mobile Kibubu works. If you download an application from Android Store, you'll be provided with the first menu, and the first menu will uh, we'll need you to register if you are a new user and if you are an old user then you have to log in so let's assume that you're a new user so you have to register now you will fill in your information that's my name and that's my number and I'll fix my password and then I'll, I'll, I'll log in and if I'm an old user I'll just have to log in fill in my login in credentials and then I'll be on a system within a system um, for in, I mean, Mobile Kibubu gives you a way to, to create your goals. So 
you you'll be needed to create a goal because we believe that people have different goals. Uh, for example, I'll, I'm having a, a goal to buy a plot maybe next year or a goal to buy a new PC. Those are long-term and short-term goals. They are different actually. So you'll be required to enter your goal. If your goal is to buy a shamba maybe um, a year uh, to come, you will fix your goal and then you will have to deposit uh, money to your mobile kibubu account. Now depositing money into mobile kibubu account, um, we have to convert from physical money to digital money. Currently, Mobile Kibubu is a very small entity and we cannot say, we can provide agents to uh, develop or to, to, to deposit cash. So we are currently thinking on how to work with Tigo Pesa and Pesa and Etel Money so that you could take money from your Tigo Pesa and Pesa account into Mobile Kibubu account as a mobile money fixed account. And as you've configured your account, you enter your goal, you enter um, the agent that you're using, like if it's M-Pesa, Tigo Pesa and all that, and then you'll enter your amount. The starting amount is very small. The amount is 500. It is ridiculous to think that you can work all the way from where you live up to a bank in order to deposit 500 shillings. So Mobile Kibubu helps people with low income and middle income to make sure that they accomplish their goals. After depositing money, you can view your, tran your transaction history. For example, you see uh, uh, Shamba account has 500, Nyumba account has 10,000. Uh, this shows how much you can make a, a fixed money or, or you can fix your, your, your money into an account um, which can support your goals at the end of the time where you can get your money. So Mobile Kibubu works in a way that if you reach a time to, to withdraw your money, you will have a window of seven days a week uh, in order to, for you to draw your money or to reconfigure your account in order to extend it or what, whatsoever. So that is how Mobile Kibubu works. And our real aim in developing this application is to make sure that we, we support people to, to accomplish their goals and yet we support country-wise in order to make sure that financial inclusion reaches all the people in Tanzania. Thank you. Yeah, I'm with my friends. We are having a project we call AgroLens. AgroLens is an Android application that is going to help farmers detect pests and diseases in their plants. Yeah. We came to this idea last year, 2017, July, because we found a report, a CAG report that was reporting more than 270 billion were lost due to pests and diseases. Now, this brought a great shock to us because that huge amount of money to farmers is just too much. So we thought, what can we do with our ICT? So we came up with an idea that is going to help farmers detect plants, detect diseases and pests in their plants. Yeah. So we came up with this application. How it works is very simple. A farmer needs to have our application in his Android, Android phone. Then from there, he'll just open it and select a plant, let's say tomato, then he'll select it either from Galilee or he'll take direct picture if he's, he or she is in the field. So from there, after uploading it, the application will do the analysis and bring back answers. Our application is very nice, especially for our country because it works completely offline. So all those farms which are located in very remote areas, it will work just fine. Yeah, that's all for application. Thank you.